Hey guys, this is Odd1 Gaming. This is going to be another Raid Shadow Legends video. In today's video, I want to show you a few fun teams that I've been playing around with for farming the Fire Knight with only Apex. The reason why I'm making this video is because, well, we do have this tournament going on right now that's, you know, Fire Knight tournament that says you have to use only Apex in order to get at least this milestone reward, these, uh, whatever they're called, I forgot their name, these crystals that basically gives us a free summon. What are they called again? Let me see. Uh, Prism Jewels. So basically, every 45 Prism Jewels, you, you get yourself a free summon, which can get you one of these amazing, honestly, like 99% of these are amazing Apex, or legendaries and if i'm not mistaken it's only these ones so it's only these ones uh that you can get from the summon so you definitely would want to try and do it okay there's gonna be two ways that you can actually do that okay so there's gonna be two ways that you can do that it's one either you just do it so you can finish it as fast as possible and use as as uh, few resources as you want and the way to do that would be to come uh come and do Fire Knight stage 20, okay? In order to do stage 20, you're just gonna bring epics. And basically this is kind of like what I tried, what I brought in, and these epics kind of do it. You have Deacon, you have uh, obviously a Lord that's the best turn meter control, you have Perkin of for some ally attack, and then I do have Magnar as my DPS in this team. So the way this team works is just pretty straightforward, just explode them, get to the boss, and then once you get to the boss, try to kill the boss as fast as possible, and that's gonna be it. You can obviously bring people like Royal Guard, people like Husks that do max HP, any other champion that helps you, or any other epic that you have really well built that's gonna help you kill these as fast as possible. Even somebody like a Seer could be good, okay? If you can bring some buffs to kill the waves faster, you would bring a Seer. But honestly, 35 seconds to get past the waves and then just to get to the boss part is not that bad, actually. Do keep in mind that obviously on normal Fire Knight, you need Termitor Control. In my team, I have a Lord that does that on the A1, but she's wrong affinity over, he over here, so keep that in mind. But then I also have Deacon, that the same Deacon brings Terminator control. Also, do not forget the fact that when it comes to masteries down the support tree, you have the Evil Eye Mastery that's gonna help you uh, push the boss's Terminator back with, with anybody that has accuracy to land that. But as you can see, this one's pretty straightforward, it's pretty fast, and it can actually destroy this boss pretty easily okay and if you just want to do that you would do stage uh this stage and then you would move on with your day however if you want to try and push to the next level in the sense of like try to get to hard fire knight so at least you have a chance of getting that mythic gear i'm going to show you that team that i could do on my account which trust me i did not perfectly min max it i just Threw a team together that made some sense. I brought some freeze because keep in mind on hard stages, if you did not know already, you need to bring freeze to push the boss's turn meter back. That's the way that the mechanic works over here. There's plenty of other ideas where you can use counter attack from a skull crusher, or you can bring uh, also bring a cleanser or somebody with increased defense with a mastery that decreases that. But I'm just gonna show you the team that I came up with, and I just did stage one. This one might be able to push higher stage, even I call the stage six. The reason is I do not have Neldor, okay? If I did have Neldor, the high elf epic, well, that would have been a lot easier. However, let's see how this team goes. And the beauty of this team is the way that I thought to actually make it work. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about because it's pretty fun as I'm basically relying. Obviously, there is some RNG because apart from Gori that has the freeze on the A2 pretty much uh, guaranteed, you know, it's a 100% chance to land. The... Creed on the blue does not have a 100% chance to land that freeze on the A1 or on his A2, so it does make it a little bit trickier, okay? But I did play with some gear sets that can make that a lot easier, and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about because, you know what, this idea might help you for an actual hard finite team if you don't have all the Gnuts and whatever other teams that destroys this boss. You might have some other teams where you're trying to use somebody like a... Uh, Yakar of the Scorch, maybe Neldor, you know, and you don't have just about enough rotation for your people. Well, this idea of the builds that I'm going to show you might help you out to maybe beat stage 10 for the first time. You know, I might be playing around with these gear sets on like higher stages, trying to come up with a stage uh, 10 team without using the usual, you know, the usual builds. It's going to be a little bit quirkier and uh, yeah, you're going to see what I'm talking about. But it's basically relying on gear sets that decrease your cooldown. Okay, 
We always had the reflex set. Okay, reflex was arguably the best one when it comes to uh, resetting the cooldown of your skills. If you wanna get back to your freeze abilities, if you wanna get back to your ally attacks faster and whatnot, then reflex set would have been the best one. However, with the introduction of the Cursed City of Sintranos, there's another option, guys. There's the option of getting the Merciless set as well, which pretty much brings you the similar thing that uh, decreases the cooldown of a random skill by uh, one turn every time you do damage. So there's a 30% chance that one will proc. So if you are going to combine the Reflex plus the Merciless, just basically hitting the right stats that you need, it should allow you to be able to do something like this. You know, I honestly did not expect to do it because like I said, they're not perfect uh, freeze options. They're not ideal. It's, you know what, it's just stage one. Yes, but like I said, this is not perfectly ideal, okay? I, I have not perfectly attuned this team. I have not tried to min-max it and move around with it. I just wanted to be like, you know what? Let me be uh, try to be relatable and basically look at my account, saw what epics I had to do freeze. That's what I came up with, Creo, uh, Creodon and Gori. Then I was like, okay, who brings me decreased speed, decreased defense, decreased attack? That's what I saw my stag knight. He's obviously <laughs> MVP. Then you need ally attackers. Obviously, Farrakh in the Fat is the best at that. If you do not have Farrakh in the Fat, you could use also Morag. But Morag might not be as reliable as Farrakh because Morag only teams up with, I think, two or three other allies, whereas Farrakh in the Fat makes everybody attack. The reason why Farrakh is better for that is because, one, it takes the counter of the shields down faster, and two, you, it kind of guarantees you that at least it gets uh, Creodan, which has the freeze on the A1, to join the attack. With Morag, that's not guaranteed. However, might work again with, like I said, with Morag Bronze Lock because what she does bring is she does bring that strength on the A2, and then whenever uh, somebody is attacked while she's uh, under that strength, and she counterattacks. You know, she also brings double hit on the A1. So, you know, I've not tested in, like I said, I've not deeply tested this. I just wanted to make a quick video of this team that I'm using for. Uh, for the Fire Knight on hard, just using epics, using whatever people I had around, I just swapped some gears, and this is what I came up with. I, I never tested on, on the second stage, it might fail. The reason why it might fail is because, well, it might be the speeds. Do keep in mind, if you wanna check the speeds, go on hellhades.com, this page is just amazing. You go here, select the stage, see what you want, it shows you the speed of the boss, the accuracy that you need and all that. The higher you go, for example, if you look at stage two, the boss gains, five more speed and and so on from stage five though the from stage six the speed goes up by 25 percent so it does become a lot harder however it seems like this one might actually still work on uh on stage two unless let's see can he get a turn is he gonna get a turn he should get a turn into the a2 boom a2 again there we go honestly this one might even work with uh double gory obviously you might prefer to also have uh, higher speeds on your dps a better rotation you know try to make sure that you kill the waves pretty fast try to make sure that you have the waves control maybe if you cannot kill them that fast oh you see we can take a hit and that's because we do have stagnites decrease attack so even if we do take a hit at least on these lower stages, we are still okay because of the decrease attack from Stagnite that lands and also the decrease speed is pretty much, you know, mandatory. Having that decrease speed on the boss makes it, makes us be able to rotate our skill faster and the boss not get that many turns. Also, Creodon bringing increased speed and boosting a Termitor does the same thing. As you can see, stage two, I even did this. Let me show you first the presets that I used on the, this team. The, I'm not going to show you the stage, the stage 21 because it's, you know, it's, it's pretty easy. But for this one, I basically let Magna do whatever on the boss part I made him prioritize the A2. Very can actually should make him open with the ally attack, then do not use it afterwards. On the second wave, do not use it at all. Then on the boss part, you want to make him only use the ally attack and not the A2 because from the Merciless and the Reflex set, he's just gonna keep resetting this, and basically, if you're lucky, almost every other turn, you're gonna have an ally attack, which makes it pretty awesome. Clear down the blue, I don't use the freeze on the first wave because Magna pretty much kills it, even though, again, Magna's not perfectly built, he could still be better, but it works. So I don't use the freeze on the first wave, I do use it on the second wave, open it, and then do not use it anymore. I don't need to constantly freeze them, we're just fine for now. If you see that you're struggling, then you can keep this one on. Then when we come to the boss part, make him prioritize the start with the A1 because the triple hit and after that, let him do whatever. Increase speed and Terminator boost is good. The chances to freeze on this one's even better, so it works just fine. 
Then when it comes to Gori, he does whatever on the first wave, second wave does whatever, third wave, I make him only use the A2, okay? Maybe I should even turn off the A2 over here, so that I have the triple hit guaranteed on the boss, because, you know what, he's just in there for the freeze. I don't even have masteries on him, and neither do I have on Kriodan, you're gonna see old Kriodan. But basically, this is all you care about. Three turn cooldown, triple hit, 100% chance to freeze. This one, if he's lucky and procs it, the reflex and the merciless, he basically can do the A2 every turn, which is, you know, it kind of changes the way that we see this boss. When it comes to Stag Knight, open with the A2, then do not use it. Second wave, open and then, obviously, obvious, uh, I cannot speak. Obviously, I guess I could just leave it like this. Then on the boss part, open with the A1. What you really want for this, for the hard fight night, is try to have, on everybody, try to have uh, Phantom Touch, because the, the hit from Phantom Touch takes down the shield counter, and that's what you want. Okay, so if you look right now on uh, Stag Knight, I do have him in a shield set. Honestly, it didn't change him. Like, you could build him in a damage build, because he can hit on the A1. He's pretty fast, some crit, <laughs> some crit damage. You basically care about his speed, his accuracy, and his debuffs, and then you, if you want, you give him damage. When down War Master, down the support tree. You want to get Sniper, because without Sniper, his A2 has a 95% chance to land decrease defense and decrease attack. With this one, it's 100%. Also, his A1 is not 100% to land decrease speed, so Sniper is going to help you a lot more. So definitely you want to get Sniper on him. Then, Magnar, he's just in a whatever lethal gear I had uh, going around, plus some... Uh, I don't even know why I have Perception on him. I don't care about him landing debuffs. But Perception, he's pretty slow. 157, then uh, decent crit damage, good HP. Actually, I do have a bonus, some bonus stats. I do have 12 more speed. And I have a little bit more crew damage and some accuracy for Fire Knight, but not that much. Masteries, I do have them with uh, Helm Smasher because they have high defense in Fire Knight, so you want to kill them as fast as possible. Then Creadan the Blue is in whatever I had them built before. He's in your Relentless. 243 speed, pretty fast because obviously you want him to rotate through his skills. I don't even have full masteries on him. If I did have full masteries, I would reset this one. I would not go support tree. I would go office tree, grab giant slayer, and then I would go. Uh, actually, I would not grab giant slayer. I think I would go defense and support, and I would grab fearsome presence to increase that chance to land that freeze, okay? Because he's kind of like really important. The team getting that extra 5% chance to land the freeze is going to be really good. Perk in the fat, the first one that's built in the quirky set that I, that I said, 4-piece Merciless gives us the 30% chance to decrease the cooldown of a skill, and then 4-piece uh, Reflex that again has a chance to decrease the cooldown every time he takes a turn, okay? And basically, if you look at the builds, I just I don't even care about accuracy. I just have him in here for the ally attack for the boss. So I don't care about accuracy, just gave him whatever I had left over with some speed, you see this one's whatever whatever i didn't even care look at this this makes no sense again this one makes no sense i just wanted four pieces of merciless wanted four pieces of reflex and then went on with my day he's not even that fast 218 and then whatever's almost uh you know close to 100 percent crit rate some attack some crit damage i don't care his only job is to basically bring us this ally attack and he does have war master and then gori no masteries like i said he is booked at least you want the a2 if you have the a2 booked you can ignore everything else you don't really care you want this triple head that lands freeze he's in the same thing as farrakhan three piece uh four piece reflex four piece merciless okay and again merciless pieces whatever accuracy with some speed some hp a random speed boot random ring that had left over a random uh, you know uh, banner that doesn't even have accuracy or speed i just used it because i had it and that's about it and he's running at 215 speed and then with the accuracy to land his stuff again no masteries so yeah this is pretty much the team i had really fun and i'm really excited to play around more with this combination of reflex and merciless because honestly this can open up some uh some pretty interesting team teams for a uh, hard fire night okay maybe even stage 10 using all the free top 10 ones maybe i'm gonna try and do some teams with gori and yakarl as the only free champions and see what i can do with it and it might be fun but anyway this is gonna be it for today guys i hope you enjoyed it if you did enjoy this video uh don't forget to drop a like to it subscribe to the channel to see when i upload next and we'll see you on the next one peace love take care everyone bye guys <laughs>